Today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing and demo of this Ryobi 1800 PSI electric pressure washer. If you guys are in the market for a pressure washer, you don't always need some of those higher output PSI models. Obviously, if you're doing siding or driveways, you know, some of those higher output models are probably a better bet. However, if you are doing anything with a low PSI like car washing, etc., sometimes these lower models will fit the bill, not to mention that they're very portable. As you can see, this model here is in this small box. So my goal today is to kind of give a general overview of this product to see if this is worth the $99 that they're currently selling it for. All right, so getting things opened up here, obviously here's our pressure washer. They do have some nozzle holders over there that, that can fit those in here. There is another one in this bag as well. And this is just a different type of output. That'll fit in there like that. And this is just a handle that's gonna get installed on there. When we look at the electrical cord here, it is a longer cord, which is nice, so you don't have to be very close to an outlet. And it does also have a GFCI protector on the outside of that. Our nozzle is just gonna get connected here. It should just get, get inserted in here. And you simply twist like that, and then your nozzle is ready to go there. They do also include this soap dispenser if you're into dispensing any type of soap. Then finally, here's just your hose that's gonna get connected to your nozzle to get connected back here to the actual pressure washer. All right, to get our hose connected, you simply just thread it on over here, and you thread the other end onto your nozzle here. It's very straightforward, just push it in there and tighten it down. And take your other end Push it in there as well and tighten that one down as well. Now the one comment I'll make here real quick, in regard to these nozzles, you'll see on the end here, it has a different type of connection. This will not go into the end. This is a standard pressure washer connection if you guys are familiar with those. That just allows you to accept bits like that where you push it back like that and it snaps in. However, if you look at this foam cannon they have over here, that's a different connection. That connection is meant to get connected up here. So if you twist this off, you do it very similar where you'll, pre where you'll press this in there and you'll twist it like that and now it's on there. So that's something to keep in mind. This piece will only fit on this part of the nozzle, not on the end. So they just take that off, put our other nozzle back on there. So overall fit and finish, you know, obviously it's $99. So to say that I have low expectations of this thing would be an understatement. You know, I think overall in general, it looks to be nice. The hose is really lightweight and obviously that's good if you're moving things around. I hope that doesn't mean that it's also a lower quality as well and it's gonna start leaking, but you know, obviously only time will tell. Uh, but other than that, again, for $99, you know, I think it looks nice enough. So let me get into a quick demo here. I'm gonna wash a car, I'm gonna see if this thing you know, for what I'm trying to use it for will fit the bill in regard to car detailing. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it.
Alright, so what are my final thoughts here? As you saw there in both demos, when we did the patio pavers and we did the cars, it was actually pretty impressive on how it operated. It's very similar to some of your other power washers where on occasion it's going to need to pause and build up the pressure on the pump. However, once it built up that pressure, it was sufficient for a very long time on holding the pressure. The one thing that I did notice after using it a little bit, it kind of introduces another problem that you may or may not have on a gas powered model because obviously you have a lot more cords, right? So you have this big bulky electric cord, which is good because you need the length of it, but it introduces another challenge of maintaining or where you're going to store that. I believe that's what this little strap is here where it's kind of supposed to help with that but it'd be nice if they just kind of had a handle or something on the side where you could wrap those around i think that would be a very easy thing for them to put on the side and would actually give you a little bit more storage capacity where you can compact that versus having all these cords but obviously you're looking for mobility on this and you're looking for the size so you know there's some give and take to that in regard to the nozzles as mentioned there before they just had the two the 15 and this kind of specialty nozzle that they have if you notice when i was doing the patio pavers it kind of had a circulating osculating uh, movement that was going around and it actually surprised me on how well it worked you're able to get a lot of material off quicker versus if you're using one of these other standard degrees whether 15 20 you know obviously you're going to have a steady stream and you got to actually move the wand a lot more versus this was moving it for you so uh, i really did like this on the patio pavers if you notice when I did the car, I did not like that and I took it off and I just used one of my standard 40 degree angle ones. Because for me, when I'm doing a car, I like that steady stream where I can maintain a consistent going across there. So I did use that for the car instead of that. In regard to the foam cannons, I initially used this one that came with the model. I didn't really like it. It just seemed like it produced a lot more water than foam. I put more soap in here to try to compensate for it. It really didn't work that great. So I ended up using this McKillen's one that I've had for many years and it allows you to adjust the foam up here. Now there's two sides to some of the car detailers out there. There's the camp that wants a really, really thick foam layer on there where it almost sticks onto the paint. I'm more somewhere in the middle where I don't want it 100% foam on there. I want to try to find some balance. Obviously I don't want straight water almost like this one did, but I want it somewhere in the middle where when I apply that foam for the first pass, it's gonna have enough water in there to kind of help that slowly bead down the car. Then I follow up with a second pass and I do it again and it'll start beading down more. And the reason I like to do that better than just the straight thick foam is because I want a lot of that to get not only broken down on the paint, I want it to actually bead down off the car. So when you get your microfiber sponge on there for the next step to wash it, you're not dragging all that material across the paint. But again, you know, that's personal preference. That's just the way I like. And I do like on this model, you can adjust it however you want. And I've had this thing for probably five, six years and it's still working great. So I would recommend if you're looking at a phone came in, obviously this was free. So, you know, take it for what it is. But if you're really going to do this a lot, I would recommend getting a better, better quality one, just like this one we have here today. So to kind of wrap things up here from mobility and car detailing and lower PSI applications. I was very impressed with this, especially for $99. I think it's hard to beat. The one thing I will say, if you're gonna get into any driveways or sidewalks or you have a really large driveway, 
I probably wouldn't go down the path of this, especially if you're bigger driveways or doing siding a lot. Look at some of the higher PSI, specifically some of the gas models, and there are a few electric versions that are slowly coming out. Obviously, they're a lot more expensive, but if you get up to in that 3000 PSI, check out one of these surface cleaners. Now, this is an all aluminum one I have back here that I've had for a lot of years. I've used it various jobs, and I really like that. You can get through a driveway or sidewalk in minutes with one of them versus up here trying to manually do it with this. That is a far better option if that's what you're looking for uh, in regard to, you know, mass quantities of getting through driveways, etc. there. So if you're more on that end, think about one of those. But if you're kind of on the lower PSI range, you know, with the car detailing, you know, obviously some lower PSIs. I was very impressed with this. And obviously this is my initial impression. I've only used this thing for about an hour. We'll see how it holds up over the next couple of months. If it does, you know, have some quirks with it or it something fails on it. I'll do a follow-up review, but my initial impressions on this thing, especially for $99, I think this thing is hard to beat. So, uh, you know, again, I think there's a time and place for this. There's also a time and place for other models. It just happens to be whatever you need there for your applications. So hopefully this helped you out here today. If it did, please give me the thumbs up. If you're interested in more content like this, please hit that subscribe. But again, I hope this helped you out. Thanks for watching.